Hey, Tommy from The Run Testers and welcome to the monthly roundup where we talk about all of the things that we've tested over the past month or so that we wanted to tell you about. They just tend to be things that we have been wearing throughout the month or testing out throughout the month and we just haven't had a chance to talk about them in another video. So let's dive in and see what we all picked this month. <laughs> So I wanted to talk to you about this Win Acceleration shirt. Now you may not have heard of Win before, it's spelled U-Y-N, but they're an Italian based makers of high performance apparel. And recently I got to test some of their kit in anger while running a lap of Lake Garda in Italy, which is quite close to their headquarters. Now I used this Acceleration shirt for that run. It's designed for temperature control in hot conditions. And I ran in this for 70 miles over two days in temperatures between 20 degrees and 30 degrees Celsius. So it was a perfect test for this and I fell in love with this top. It reminded me a lot of the X-Bionic Fennec shirt, those kind of highly technical shirts. I used this one of that one to run the Marathon de Saab back in 2015. Only I think this one's a bit lighter, it's a bit more comfortable. It's incredibly soft, like really, really soft against the skin. The fabric is light, it's really, really stretchy and flexible and it features these breathable flex zones that help dissipate heat in the key areas. And even in bizarrely testing temperatures for October in Europe, I found it helped keep me really quite cool and crucially without getting sweat sodden, which was one big thing. I wore it and it didn't get heavy and wet. But what I really love was how disappearing it felt. It feels quite kind of snug, but because it's really flexible, it moves with you and doesn't restrict you in any way. It's got this kind of great combo of snug and cozy, but really airy. Other great things, it dries fast and it doesn't stink, well, too bad anyway, going into a second day's running. It's dead handy for multi-day adventures or if you want to just do less washing. I have a feeling it's also going to be a great layer for the winter too, perhaps under a jacket, almost like a mid-layer come t-shirt. So though it's on the pricier side for a t-shirt, it is technical and I think it's going to be a really versatile top to have in the wardrobe that will last long. And if you're putting together an MDS, a Marathon de Saab kit or a multi-day ultra desert kit, then I think this might be well worth a look. Now winter is coming here in the UK and that means a lot more rain where we are. So on the bright side, that gives us something to talk about with our neighbors, but it also means more wet running shoes. Now I have to admit, I'm a bit lazy with my shoe care and I'll often just stick wet shoes on or under a radiator, which is not really that good for them and the durability. When I'm being good, I might stuff the shoes with newspaper or kitchen towel to soak up the moisture. But these days, actually, I don't really have much newspaper to hand and rattling through rolls of kitchen roll actually gets quite pricey if you're running a lot in wet shoes. So when I saw these cedarwood shoe dryers, I was really quite interested to see if they worked. I thought they might offer a quick and convenient alternative to that, those two methods that I've been using, and they do. Slipping these into your shoes takes about 10 seconds, and they'll sit there overnight, soaking up the moisture, working much faster than air drying. They also help manage the worst, no, not all, of the nasty odors. That cedarwood really smells really nice. And Sidus also guarantees that they'll keep sucking up the damp for a year. For under 16 pounds, they're actually pretty sound investment for taking better care and extending the lifespan of those increasingly expensive shoes you keep buying. Yeah, and they do smell rather wonderful. So my first bit this month, and I have to read this, are the One More Fit SE Open Earbuds S30, which is way too long a name, but the One More S30 earbuds more or less covers it. These are pretty cheap open buds, basically. Like I've been testing a lot of these this year. It's been the year of open headphones that basically put a little speaker near your ear canal so you can be aware of your surroundings while you run, whilst listening to audio of a slightly higher sound quality than you get from the bone conduction headphones. I'm testing those from things, brands like Shox, Clear, Open Rock, Ola Dance, and the One More Buds basically coming a lot cheap but they are 70 pounds or 70 dollars it's less than half the price of things like the clear arc 2 and the shocks open fit and you get a really strong product for that price like they still sound good not as good as the clear arc headphones in particular and they're not quite as comfortable as the shocks ones but they still are pretty comfortable sit very securely on the ear with that ear hook design they sound pretty good decent battery life at 10 hours uh, with another 20 in the case all in all a really quite a solid set of open headphones and you know, open headphones never sound as good as in-ear buds to me, so don't necessarily always see the need to splash big money on those kind of headphones when you could just get a very good set of in-ear buds for sound quality and then pick up a cheaper set of open buds like these, although they're still not that cheap, but they are already reduced to £60, I've noticed, this week, so that's a good sign for their long-term price. I use these on several runs, and the fit is nice and secure, even if you're wearing glasses and a hat, i found, and although the hook does dig into the back of the ear a little bit over time, they are still quite comfortable. They're not buds that I loved using for 
long spells outside of running but for kind of one two hours of running they're fine perfectly comfortable nice and secure so yeah if you're looking at open headphones and you've been put off by the very high prices of things like the shocks open fit which are great headphones but that is a big price to pay for this style of headphone i think the one more s30 are a good alternative next up we're going to very quickly talk about the uh, morton gel 160 i'm gonna say very quickly because it's very similar to the gel 100 just a bigger gel essentially you get 40 grams of carbs instead of 25 in the smaller gel 40 grams of carbs is a lot to have in a packet like this and it's obviously morton's hydrogel which i have found very easy in my stomach in general compared to other gels that i've used in marathons and such so i usually actually use morton's drink mix 320 in marathons i carry 250 ml soft flask of that which is 40 grams of carbs so having a gel that provides that in a more convenient smaller package lightweight package like this i think it's gonna be very useful plan to use these as part of my next marathon build and for race day itself and you know it does exactly what you'd expect it's 40 grams of carbs delivered in a convenient package i found when using these basically to fuel runs recently where i would normally have used the morton drinks mix instead and it does does the job basically it's easier to get down i found than other 40 gram carb gels that i've tried things like the uh, sis beta fuel gel or the ote super carbs they're both great but they're slightly more aggressive and hard on the stomach i find compared to the hydrogel you get here Obviously, with Morton, it's not that cheap, but it's also reasonable value considering it's a, a bigger gel. It's £40 or $50 for 10, whereas the Gel 100 is £33 for 12. And you know, there's a lot of carbs there, small package, not much more to say. Very handy for long events. And my last pick this month is the Kip Run 500 Running Compression Socks. These are £18 from Decathlon, which obviously is good value. That's why we always talk about Decathlon. And I want to check these out because I've been using compression socks a lot in my running of late. Uh, I've been having some minor Achilles issues, and I felt like compression sock made me feel a bit better on the run so i've been using loads of them lately my favorite are the sep the run socks 4.0 or seps maybe sep cep kep i don't know one of those you know what it looks like uh, and their ultra light socks as well are also very good i use those for a lot of races but wanted to try the cheaper option you get from decathlon because uh, sep socks are quite expensive they are for over 40 pounds or even 50 pounds so these come in much cheaper obviously do a similar job i'd say they are thicker and less comfortable than the sep socks for sure i've been using the decathlon socks in a range of runs i prefer to use them mainly for shorter runs and then switch to the pricier options for more for longer or harder runs that's on the run though outside of running they're just as good so if you're using compression socks for recovery socks then i would not hesitate to get the decathlon on ones ahead of more expensive options they're comfortable do what you expect from compression socks make your make your calf muscles feel all hugged and that they're getting some kind of benefit and on the run yeah they're pretty good they're just not quite as lightweight breathable and comfortable as some of those sep socks i mentioned earlier but yeah solid pick there that's the kip run fire running 500 compression socks <laughs> My first pick this month is the uh, Science in Sport Go Electrolyte Tub. So this is pretty simple. It's an electrolyte powder that gives you 36 grams of carbohydrates per serving. Um, it has some uh, salts in it. It has some minerals and vitamins in it, not loads. It's really about that carbohydrate that you're getting. So you're, you're getting more calories and you've got a bit of energy to do the run. Uh, I don't normally use fueling like this for my runs um, unless I'm doing marathon training. I've just come off a big uh, marathon training block. I did Berlin and then I did Abingdon Marathon. So I was doing a lot of running. And what I found was that I was getting tired in some of the larger interval sessions. I don't really like using gels when I'm out training. I use them for racing, but I, I don't tend to use them when I'm out um, ticking off loads of miles for training, mainly because they're quite expensive. Um, but also, I'm, I'm not really used to taking gels all the time. I, I do it for races because I need to, but in reality, I don't really like having gels that much. I'm not a massive fan, especially when I'm training. So the reason why I picked this up is that I wanted something to get a bit of energy before some of the longer sessions. I was doing about 100 kilometers a week at my peak for Berlin Marathon and I wanted something just to take me over and give me a little bit of extra energy for some of those runs. The thing I like about the powder, the SIS powder, is that um, even though you get 36 grams per serving, because it's a powder, you can choose how much you want. So I probably wouldn't always have a full 36 gram serving. I might have a half of that if I was just going out for a, 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 a shorter interval session. I might have a bit more if I, I knew I was doing something longer. Um, so I like the fact that you can modify how much you want with this it's really tasty um it's quite subtle it's not overpowering taste um it's really easy to drink uh, and it's not too expensive either when you compare it with things like gels um when it comes to energy so uh, sis go electrolyte um powder uh, goodbye if you're looking for something just to top your energy levels up if you're doing a lot of training
My next pick this month is a running top. It's the Seiski Flow Long Sleeve Top. I have just started wearing my long sleeve tops. It's getting colder now. It's uh, getting windy in Brighton. So um, I've been pulling out all of my long sleeve tops to do my runs with. Uh, and what I have found about this one um, is that it's quite nice. I like the look of it. It's subtle. I can wear it when I'm not running if I want to. Um, but the reason I like this is, is it's relatively thin. It's it's not the thinnest material out there. Um, so it's better suited to um, really cold days. Um, but it's also quite breathable as well. So if you put this on and go out in the cold, the first kilometer or two where you're not heated up, uh, it does a good job at keeping you warm. And then when you actually pick up the pace and you're out there, whether you're doing like an interval session or a half marathon training session things like that um it is pretty good at sweat wicking um and it does feel quite breathable as, as well so overall there's not a lot to say about it apart from the material it's just a really solid comfortable nice looking long sleeve top for running great for the winter um and i don't tend to wear jackets that much in winter because i when i put them on i get hot within about 2k and then i have to take them off this is my sort of main type of top I wear even in, in on the coldest days because I will get hot uh, and I just find this very comfortable. I also like the fact that uh, this is a medium, uh, I find it's quite roomy as well, it's quite comfortable. Sometimes when you get running tops they can be a bit tight um, and they can be a bit, bit designed for um, the uh, thinner man uh, whereas I like a bit of giving it and this is very comfortable, there's a lot of um, space in it to move around in the arms and around the midriff. My third pick this month is um, one which I picked up from Amazon, um, and I don't think it's even got brand name. It's just a, a Garmin watch charging connector. Um, now, the reason that I wanted this is that Coros has its own uh, key fob charging um, cable. Really small little thing. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. I constantly lose my watch charging cables. I've got a drawer full of them, and then I go through it, and I can't find any of the ones that I actually need. Um, and the chorus one is on my keys, so I, I never I never lose it. So I wanted to find out if Garmin had their own version of it. I don't think they do. Um, they should do, really, because it's a really nice little uh, thing to have because if you've got lots and lots of watches like I have uh, or electrical uh, appliances that you need chargers for, you end up having a lot of wires hanging around and I'm constantly having to hide them away um, so that uh, they're not out everywhere. Um, so the reason that I got this is because I wanted a version of that that Coros key fob that I could use to charge my Garmin. Um, and this came up. It's that You get two in a pack and they're $6.99. I should point out that these are not Garmin. So if you're worried about using a charger on your Garmin watch that isn't a Garmin charger, uh, because it will um, affect the warranty and things like that, probably don't use these. But um, if you uh, don't mind, then these are really simple. It's a USB-C um, connector, which you can stick into any of USB-C leads that are plugged in, and it just converts it to the Garmin four pin connector. Simple as that, dead easy. I've used it for quite a bit for over the past week, works absolutely fine, charges the same time it would I'd expect it to charge. Um, and you also get with it a little, I can't find it at the moment because I don't know what I've done with it, but uh, a little slip um, of uh, like thread that you can actually use to connect to your keys um, or something else so you don't lose it. So yeah, 6 dollars for two of these, they're working very well for me at the moment. Um, and. I haven't lost um, either of them yet, although I can't find those, those threads. I don't think, um, my, maybe I didn't keep those and I put them in the bin, but um, yeah, good value um, as a backup charger if you want something for like holidays um, or just to keep in your work bag or something like that in, uh, in it, if you need it for an emergency. Hi runners, I'm Laura. I've got three options this week. Um, one, a little bit of a treat yourself item and two uh quite reasonably priced i think but all three things that i um, have been enjoying using so first up autumn's here and i've been running in the saw long sleeve tech tee okay um as you might expect from saw it's at the the more premium end of the pricing so this is 90 pounds um for a very lightweight long sleeve tee it is available in extra small up to extra large and it is made with 87 percent recycled materials it is lovely it is lovely to wear it's very lightweight um kind of you can sort of see a little bit through through the fabric um 
the very like small holes in the in the weave very very lightweight so it's not super cold at the moment it's just kind of those crisper mornings so a nice long sleeve something to wipe wipe the sweat away let's say on your face on that long sleeve um but just a little bit extra covering i have been using it for um also actually i've been running uh somewhere where there's a lot of deer uh, this past week and therefore potentially a lot of ticks so it's good to have that extra little bit of covering don't need it for the warmth but um covering those arms so i would layer it underneath stuff um it's it's very lightweight, good for layering as we go further into the winter, but at the moment, just taking that chill off. Very, um, very pleased to have it in my club colour almost, this blue. It also comes in red. Um, it's got two kind of reflective bits, one here on the front, front shoulder and one in the middle of the back, that very discreet um, kind of saws. I don't know what shape we'd call that, but a little 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 slash anyway um very reflective bit but quite small very subtle it's nice if you've got 90 quid and you're in the market for a long sleeve then uh go for it also on the front the the saw brand in there because uh so everyone knows that you've spent 90 pounds on your long sleeve tea my second item uh another long sleeve tea um a little bit warmer and a bit cheaper. This is the Adidas Run Icons Running Long Sleeve Top. There we go. A long name. There's lots of tops uh, on Adidas's uh, catalogue. So there we go. Run Icons Running Long Sleeve Top. £38. Comes in 2XS up to extra large and it's 100% recycled polyester. So it has a little Adidas symbol on the back, a massive one on the back. Um, but yeah, comes in black and two other colours. I think one's a, like a light grey colour and the other one is a like a tealy green. It's quite nice, but I've gone for the black. Um, it is slightly warmer in the, it's quite thin, but then it has this, the, the kind of the raised um inside on the inside it's a slightly raised weave which will trap a little bit more body heat in there and keep you a little bit warmer but it's quite still quite lightweight it's got thumb holes if you love a thumb hole um it has got thumb holes and yeah just quite a, quite a basic but um useful long sleeve tee it's on me it's loose enough that i could put a vest under as we get further into um autumn and winter um because it's not that fitted will allow for that uh but quite simple and i think quite reasonably priced at 38 pounds my final item is it's head torch season isn't it get those head torches out this is the Proviz Antares running headlamp, 500 lumens. It's 39.99, but at the moment it's down to 35.99, which is reasonable priced. It's a quite quite a lot of light comes from this. Um, it takes batteries rather than being rechargeable. Obviously, you could put your own rechargeable batteries into it. Um, it takes three AAAs, and you should get. 20 hours of light from that. It's got a good thick elastic strap, um, which keeps it, feels quite secure in place. Um, not too much movement running along with this. Uh, what I would, I would like to have seen a bit more um, padding on the back. There's plastic bit that the elastic strap goes through, but you're only really getting any padding from the, um, elastic strap there's no other padding on there so it's presumably aimed that you're going to be wearing it over a headband a buff or a bobble hat um so you're not going to be going bareheaded with this really um which is a shame not to have that option it's comfortable enough on top of a buff and things like that there are five different light settings uh there's a red one there's a flashing one there's a spotlight, a max spotlight and a floodlight. So 
So there you go. It's, 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 it's been good enough for me to see where I'm going through the woods uh, when it's a bit darker. Uh, that's what I can say. I can see a bit ahead of me. I can see probably 30 metres well. Um, do I need to see any further than that? I can pick up odd bits a bit further, but yeah. For thirty five ninety nine that it is at the moment, I think it's a good bit of kit. There we go. You've got the um, you can angle it down at your at your ground in front of you. It's a bit more technical, or angle it up a little, little bit more further afield. The button you just it's just one button on on the top to go through the options, and it's quite easy to press. I've tried it with gloves on. It's quite easy to find and press the button to go through those options. Hi, I'm Jane, I'm one of the run testers and I'm here with my October monthly essentials. A bit of a theme this month. I am five and a half months pregnant. I'm still running, I'm still swimming, I'm still doing activity, but it's kind of changed. It's changed what I'm looking for in my kit. So I thought I'd talk about it and bring you my top picks this month. First up are the Shox Open Swim headphones. Like I said, still running, but doing a lot more swimming as well, just to do kind of longer sessions, really. And I've been super impressed by these. I tested them a while back, and to be honest, they have sat pretty much unopened in a drawer ever since, but I've dug them out and I absolutely love them. I've been so impressed with them. They are about £150, $150, but I imagine with Black Friday coming up, you'll be able to grab them a little bit cheaper. They're just super comfortable to wear. I found that they fit really well. They don't budge in the water and because they're so lightweight, you can definitely put a running cap, a swimming cap, <laughs> running on the brain, a swimming cap over the top of them and they sit really comfortably. You're not, they're not moving when you're pushing off from the side of the wall. It is a little bit fiddly like all swimming headphones to actually get music and podcasts onto them. You have to use a cable and manually download music or podcasts onto them because Bluetooth doesn't work in water. It's a little bit fiddly, but once you've got the hang of it, it's fine. And the great thing about these is that there's two different modes. There's a little mode button on the back and you can switch between swimming and then everyday mode when you're not swimming. So obviously you can use them for running as well, but because there's no Bluetooth, you would have to still download things onto the headphones and use them to go for a run. Shocks have the open run, which I think we've all spoken about before and we've reviewed before. But as a swimming version, I was really impressed by these. I really love them. They come with a little pouch that you can put them in so you don't accidentally put them in the washing machine with your swimming kit. And I've really, really enjoyed these. Next up is the Sweaty Betty Zero Gravity Running Bra. I'm not sure if I've spoken about this and if I have already, I am sorry for repeating myself, but I have been so impressed by this bra. It has washed really, really, really well. I'm finding that as I go further along in my pregnancy, I'm definitely looking for more support in my bras. And a lot of my bras just haven't been supportive enough. Bras that were before aren't now, but this bra has really stood the test of time. It still fits, which is amazing in itself but I've washed it like I've, it's basically the only running bra I'm really running in at the moment and I wear it most runs and wash it most runs and it's just not shrunk it's not bobbled it is 75 pounds so it is an investment but I've been so impressed by this bra there's the different you can really customize the fit in the back and you can unclip up here on the back which is just great when you're trying to get out of a sweaty bra at the end of the run. It's a clever, clever design and it fastens with the traditional hook and eye fastening. So you can, you know, you're not trying to wiggle into a bra. Um, but I've been really impressed by this. It comes in loads of different colors. And again, it's one to look out for in the sales, but a really good investment if you're looking for a really supportive high impact bra. And last, but definitely not least, again, these are really niche picks that probably won't apply to a lot of people watching. So sorry about that. But these are the Nike One maternity leggings. I have held off getting maternity leggings as long as possible, but these are so, so comfortable. They've got this massive waistband for the bump and I've worn them running. I've worn them for yoga. I've worn them for Pilates. I've worn them walking the dog. They are just super comfortable. Obviously they're not, you know, if you're, if you're going out on really long runs, they've not got pockets and then probably not the most as sweat wicking, 
as something I'd normally run in, but I'm not running very, very fast at the moment and I just wanna keep running as long as possible and these fit really well. I have got a bump support, which I can be really boring and do a run tester video about, but I doubt many of you will be interested in that and these fit really nicely over the bump support. Been really impressed by them. They've become a staple and a go-to. They are 65 pounds, but again, they do them in different versions, different leg lengths, and you buy your normal size. So I bought my normal size before pregnancy and they have been really, really comfortable. I really recommend them. If you're looking to keep running and you're looking for a pair of maternity leggings that will do for running, go with Nike. So my first monthly pick are the JBL Sound Gear Sense headphones. Now these are part of this new breed of open ear air conduction style headphones. So unlike bone conduction headphones, these are essentially putting speakers near your ears, not inside your ears, and um, still give you that awareness style sound approach, but ultimately give you something that has a better, bolder, more customizable sound than bone conduction can offer you. Now this was kind of thrusted into the spotlight by Shox Open Fit, which I didn't absolutely love, mainly over the kind of design side of things now in terms of the sound gear sense these have an ear hook style design they're a bit bulkier than the open fit but ultimately i think they do the job of staying in place what i also like is that you can adjust where the speakers sit in proximity to your ears so if you want to adjust the level of awareness or the you know the effectiveness of the awareness then you can do it simply from kind of twisting up and down the kind of speaker element of the headphones now in terms of other things I really like, the sound is typically JBL. It's bold, bright, it is customizable. The JBL companion app allows you to do that and it's just very easy to do that. And I think you can get a really nice sound. If you want that finesse, you can get that finesse. And ultimately, as I said, you can get a good level of awareness from these headphones as well. I like the fact that you've got touch sensitive controls, which I don't normally opt for when I or like to have on sports and running headphones, but this is a very good example of touch sensitive controls and they, they're very responsive. They're not overly sensitive and they work very well and again you can customize them in the app as well battery life isn't anything groundbreaking i think if you're listening at kind of higher and louder volumes like i generally do and kind of those base here uh, kind of profiles or sound profiles then you know an hour's worth of running will see the battery drop by about 20 percent which you know could, you know based on what jbl kind of promises is not quite there but you do have a kind of quick charge feature which means you're constantly topping up when you drop them back in the case so yeah for me the jbl sound gets sense a really good open ear um, air conduction style headphones they are cheaper than the shocks open fit and it sits in that category of cheaper open fit rivals that i think really do a good job so my second monthly pick is a base layer now a base layer is one of those things where i feel like it's worth spending a little bit more money on because i think it can become a very good staple to have in your running wardrobe where temperature starts to drop a little bit but if you're like me and you don't like to have a lot of thick layers when you're out running and I kind of sweat very quickly when I have a lot on this can be something you can throw on underneath um, you know a long sleeve a kind of a gilet a kind of thinner jacket and it gives you that extra bit of warmth particularly the kind of beginning of the runs where that's kind of where I need it most now one that's worked for me really well and I have been using where it's not been really cold uh, in the UK but I have thought about putting on an extra layer has been this this is the Adidas Terex Xperia um, um, merino and I think lyocell based uh, base layer this is a short sleeve version it comes in long sleeve as well one thing I think I really like about in terms of the way um, Adidas kind of approaches it base layers that kind of rates them in terms of the kind of conditions they're best suited for so this is kind of scored at 150 I think it goes up to kind of 250 260 that being kind of really cold conditions this is more kind of sitting between when the conditions are maybe still a little bit warm but kind of starting to kind of cool down a little bit so definitely isn't in those kind of colder kind of running conditions now now, the first thing I like is that it is it fit wise it's not when it really kind of has that compression style fit the things like the saw base layer that I use has that kind of approach so it sits close enough against your skin but it isn't too tight so it is something technically you could kind of probably be comfortable wearing on its own without kind of wearing it underneath something I think ultimately it's very comfortable. It is a base layer that I have used a few times, as I said, and it doesn't kind of, you know, because of the material it's made from, it doesn't kind of smell when you start to sweat in it. So you can reuse it a few times before you need to wash. And I said, I've used it quite a few times over the past month and actually the previous month as well. And it's one that I've gone back and used. And I said, I've kind of switched between this and the saw one, but ultimately this is a very good quality base layer. As I said, it's not cheap, but I think it's worth, it's one of those things I think it's worth spending a little bit more 
and a base layer, a good quality base layer. And this definitely sits in the category of good quality base layers that I've really enjoyed using over the past month. That's it from us. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the little bell, all those things. And uh, if you go into the catch below, you can find a link to our podcast, which comes out at the end of each month. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time. Thank you.